Hello and welcome back to Lawrence Plays with Power Tools. Last time I cut out all the pieces for my spice rack, shaped them with the router and then glued all the shelves together. So I've now got a big pile of pieces and it's a week later so the glue is set nice and firmly and it's the weekend so it's light enough to work outside once more. I started off by removing all the clamps and inspecting my handiwork. I was generally pretty pleased however there was a lot of dried glue around the joins and some of the joins weren't quite as flush as I'd like them to be. I sorted the latter by running the router along the edge to flush it up, and then sanded off the dried glue, and sanded, and sanded, <laughs> so much sanding. Still, by the end it was definitely looking good, you can really see the difference here in this photo. The final touch for the shelves was to run the roundover bit along the bottom of the front to create a matching curve and again protect the hands that will be reaching into it. Once again, clamping was a bit tricky, but I was able to manage by moving the clamps around as I worked. I also put a curve on the top of the top shelf, since it will be exposed in the finished piece. Then I sanded some more to ensure that everything would be nice and smooth. What next? Ah yes, now the shelves need to be attached to the side panels. That should be easy enough, right? <laughs> well, I decided there was no way I'd be able to get both sides lined up with all the parts sliding around on the glue, so that the sensible way to do it would be to glue all the shelves to one side, and then once it had dried, glue the other side to the shelves as well. So I carefully placed the shelves, measured the gaps, and marked them onto the side piece. Then a squirt of glue along the edge and carefully put it into place. Then, out of sheer optimism, I glued the next one in place, and the next one, and the final one, and then tried to clamp them all afterwards. Yeah, that was pretty silly. I have to admit, I'm not sure what the best way to assemble this is, however I'm also pretty sure the way I did it was not the best. With some careful juggling of clamps and parts, I finally got the whole thing clamped into place and wiped off the squeezed out glue, at least as much as I could. Then I took a short break to examine my handiwork and realised that when I was putting the shelves together, I managed to get a front piece about one or two millimetres out, so it was creating a gap where I was gluing it to the side piece. I released the clamp so that piece dropped out. I have to admit, I tried refitting it and hoping that if I squeezed hard enough at the front it would close up, but that was clearly not going to happen. So eventually I gave up on that piece and used the now spare clamp to add some extra force to another shelf that was looking a little bit gappy, but nothing like as bad as the one I removed. I left the side panel and three shelves to dry while I thought about what to do with the fourth one. I wouldn't be able to pry it apart, the glue is far too strong. And if I tried to saw it off, it would make a horrible mess, and the shelf would end up being slightly smaller. For the protruding end, the answer was obvious, just sand or chisel it down to size, but the other end was a bit trickier. I couldn't just cut off the, the, the excess of the other shelf, because then the whole thing would be slightly too short, and wouldn't fill the gap between the two side pieces. Fortunately, I had some wood filler goo around from repairing an unfortunate jigsaw accident on the table. I globbed a, a large fingerful of that on, and left it to dry. Once it was dry, it was trivial to sand it down flush with the rest of the wood. It didn't look quite as good as the rest of the shelf, but I think a small amount like that won't be noticeable. I was then able to remove the clamps from the fitted shelves and glue this one in place as if I'd never made the mistake in the first place. Now that I had plenty of clamps available, I could use a pair of them to make sure there was plenty of pressure on the glue and to ensure it would be pressed firmly into place. Finally, I wiped off the squeeze out. It turns out a small steel ruler makes a great tool for getting it out of those awkward angles. Now to wait again while the latest glue up dries. The story here is much the same as with the other side. I applied a coat of glue to the ends of all the shelves, brushed it to even it out, and then placed the top in place. The tricky part was making everything line up. I needed to get the shelves to all sit straight, and make sure the side lined up perfectly along the back, all whilst making sure that nothing, nothing shifted while I clamped it. This was probably one of the most awkward and fiddly parts of the entire build, but eventually I had it all clamped up. 
My tip for you for this process is that you always need twice as many clamps and twice as many hands as you think you do. Eventually everything was in place and I cleaned up the glue as best as I could. Now all I could do was wait. After the glue all set, I took the clamps off again and had a good look at the piece. There were a few things I wasn't completely happy with, including what I think were scorch marks on the router on the side pieces, some gaps in the joins, protruding shelves, more gaps, and dried glue marks all over the place. There were also a few dents from um, overzealous router work in a couple of places. Time to start tidying it up. I started off by giving it a thorough sanding. This would clean up the dried glue really easily and effectively, and hopefully help with some of the protrusions and dents. The big flat areas were easy and cleaned up very nicely, however getting at the internal edges was much harder. Once again, I don't know what the right way to do this is, but I'm pretty sure this wasn't it. Now that I'd sorted out the shape and got everything assembled and smoothed, it was time to put some finish on. I'd done some tests with one of the offcuts whilst waiting for the wood to dry, testing to see how boiled linseed oil, varnish and a combination of the two looked. I decided that the more matte look of the oil was more suitable for the slightly rustic looking spice rack, compared to the very shiny glossy finish from the varnish. So I grabbed some tissue paper, splodged on some oil and started to rub it in. This worked well and it was very satisfying seeing the wood change colour. However, I realised quickly that the tissue paper was the wrong tool for the job. It, it basically worked, but it just fell apart as I used it. I carried on rubbing the oil in. The amount I'd splashed on the back was pretty much enough to cover the entire thing with a decent coat. I went over it a couple of times to make sure I hadn't missed any bits, and then left it standing to soak in. After an hour or so, I came back to give it a rub down to remove any leftover oil on the surface. After a few days, once I was convinced it had dried reasonably well, I came back to give it another coat of oil, partly to make sure I hadn't missed any spots, but also just to, to deepen the finish a little bit. This time I actually used a cloth so it wouldn't disintegrate. Again, I then left it for an hour or two and buffed the oil off again. Happily, I'd finished the build in time to leave it standing for about a week to make sure the oil was properly soaked in and dried before wrapping. Overall, I'm, I'm very pleased with this build. It's the first time I've done anything like this. The, the pipe boxing and shelves have been pretty much the limit of my DIY in the past, but I felt that from watching lots of YouTube videos I had a reasonable idea of what I was doing. There aren't too many things I'd change either. I'd want to be a bit more careful with the router when shaping pieces, and I'd like to practice more to improve my technique. I'd also like to come up with a better way to assemble the parts. Not only was it very fiddly, but there's also places where things don't line up perfectly, and I'm not sure whether that's down to bad measurement, not squeezing hard enough during glue-ups, or simply just bad technique putting it together. I definitely wish I had some larger, more professional tools. A table saw and a router table would have made this much easier, however there's definitely nowhere I could fit things like that at home. I think the whole project is very over-engineered. The wood is much thicker than it needs to be to support a load of spice jars, but that's better than the alternative. In my experience, home projects like this tend to end up being very much stronger than they need to be because us beginners have very little concept of how much wood is required to give enough strength and so we're on the side of caution. Making it out of solid oak was probably a bit overkill as well but it does look good so I'm definitely not sorry about that. I've now handed the present over and it definitely seemed to be well received. I hope I managed to surprise everyone with the quality of the project. I guess I'll see if there's a sudden surge of requests for homemade presents next year. I'm looking forward to getting started on my next project, however I haven't yet decided what that's going to be. I think it will be sensible to work on something relatively small so it's easy to manage, I'll have plenty of details to practice on and to keep the material costs down. I might also wait until the weather is a bit nicer since I do need to work outside. I hope you've enjoyed this insight into my process. If you have any suggestions for next time or ideas for, for future projects, please let me know. Thank you for watching, don't forget to uh, subscribe so you'll find out about the next video for my next projects and all the ones involving the car and all the gaming ones as well of course, and I hope to see you next time. I'll see you then.